right, thank you guys for coming. Um, as you can see, this is the talk on the CloudBees Assurance Program. Uh, my name is Tracy Kennedy, and I'm a product manager at CloudBees. Um, I'm the product owner of the CloudBees Assurance Program. Hi, everyone. My name is Andres Rodriguez, and I'm part of the engineering team implementing the assurance program into the CloudBees Jen Jenkins platform. So thanks for joining us. Today. Maybe you should turn that up. It's on, it's on. Yeah, yeah. All right, so before we begin, I'm just going to give you some quick context for anyone here who's not necessarily familiar with Jenkins, just as a refresher, um, because there are some people at the conference here today who are beginners. Um, and then we're going to go into some of the problems that uh, we at CloudBees have noticed uh, enterprise customers run into when they're using Jenkins. Um, and then we're going to give you guys an overview of what our solution is um, and a quick demo of it. So. Um, so the context then, again, for anyone who's new to Jenkins, um, Jenkins is the number one CI CD platform. It has over 100,000 installations worldwide, over 6 million plugins installed across those installations, which is pretty significant. Um, it has like an 80% market share today. Um, and the reason for its popularity is really just the unique feature set that it offers today that most other tools in the space simply don't have. Um, it's easy to install. You just run a Java war uh, command. Um, you, it's easy to configure. Um, and it's also highly extensible. So the guy who created Jenkins is named Kosuke Kawaguchi. If you were here for the keynote on day one, you saw him on stage. Um, he's a genius. He's also Cloud Beza's CTO. And when he created Jenkins, he had extensibility in mind. Um, everything in Jenkins is extensible um, or can be extended. Um, you could offer extension points for the UI or for uh, SCMs, et cetera. And that's what gives Jenkins all of its features. If there's not an extension for some special tool that you want to use, some closed source tool that you use internally, you can easily write an extension for it and write a plugin for that. Um, and so that has led to the development from the community of a lot of new features, new integrations um, in the form of something called plugins. Okay, so as Tracy has explained, one of the great assets of Jenkins is its extensibility. When you have a running Jenkins instance, what you have is a Lego-like structure, which is comprised of a, a component called the, the Jenkins core, which provides, as its name said, the core functionality for, for the system, and a set of plugins, many plugins, that collaborate between themselves to provide most of the user-facing functionality. This is great because, uh, as, Chris, uh, as Tracy has said, there is a great ecosystem of plugins that provide all kind of functionality, and it's very easy to develop new plugins. But when you are uh, deploying this kind of system in an enterprise context, sometimes just be a bit closer. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a, a problem with having so much choice because, uh, at the end of the day, there is no let's say, guide on which are the plugins that you should use to uh, satisfy your very own use cases. Basically, there are many plugins. Many of, uh, most of them have different maturity levels, have different maintainers, different life cycles, so, and they interact with each other. So at some points, it's difficult to say, hey, I'm going to use this kind of, of project, I have this kind of job that I want to do, which are the set of plugins that really provide the functionality which I need with a level of confidence that I demand. As I said in the, in the keynote yesterday, uh, having so many plugins at some points may seem like a, like a drawback because you don't know what to choose by, by themselves, no? So, we have a very great ecosystem of plugins, but we have the challenge to choose which are the right ones we should use for our level of confidence for our use cases in, in every case. But the plug, uh, and this challenge goes even, grows even bigger because it's not only which plugins we have to use. As I said before, every plugin in your Jenkins instance can interact which is with each other. They have dependencies that are managed by the system, but also, there are other kind of interaction that can happen. As I said before, every component has a different life cycle. The Jenkins core has a very predictable one. There's a weekly release every week. There's an LTS release every month with a change of LTS line every three months. However, in plugins, this is not the case. Some plugins has 
more or less regular releases. Some plugins have a great degree of activity for, for some period of time. Then they get kind of a stall, and then they continue development and things like that. And as I said, in different evolutions of different components, the interaction among these components may, may be different. So when I change one of the components of my system, the behavior of the global system may change. I may change in a way that is not uh, what I would like the instance to, to look like. So at the end of the day, we have that I don't only have to choose a set of plugins that provide the use cases that I want to use, but I also have to choose the specific versions of plugins that really provide the service I want with the level of stability, robustness, everything that I demand. But the thing is that this may not be always possible in a simple way. For example, the normal update center only provides the latest version of a plugin that is compatible with my current core, compatible from a dependency wise, from, from the dependency the plugin requires. What if I, I, if I detect it? that I should be using for, center comp for certain components uh, an older version. I have to install manually installing things, uh, trying to avoid making upgrades and things like that. So the administration turns much more cumbersome for us. And these decisions that we have presented here as challenges are not one decision that I take only one time. There are decisions that I have to repeat every day. Because every day, as a Jenkins administrator, if I go to the to the plugin manager, I may find I may find that some upgrades are now offered, and for each of, of the upgrades that are offered, I make an, an either implicit or explicit decision on whether I'm going to take it or not, because every of those upgrades may have impact in the system I have working now. So at the end of the day, I start making decisions. I decide to upgrade this one. Tomorrow, maybe I decide to upgrade another one because I want to pick one bug fix. This one has some bug fixes I needed, but besides introduces some new features that have some new interaction with another thing. And when I, at the end of the day, I may have a different configuration than anyone in the world because there are so many choices, the variability of those overchases is so big that my configuration may be unique. So when I have a problem, it's a problem which is specific of my unique and known configuration or is a problem that is normal and that, that is happening everywhere. The, lead, the, the most common the problem is usually the sooner it's resolved. But when it's very particular to a very specific configuration, sometimes the agnosis solutions are maybe more difficult. And so over time, we've been interviewing a lot of our enterprise customers, both at events like these, uh, CD summits, Jenkins um, area meetups. Um, and the feedback that we got is that while they appreciate how large the open source Jenkins plugin ecosystem is, they don't necessarily want you know, one-tenth of the plugins there. They just need the plugins that are meant for their very specific use case. Um, and when it comes to use cases, one plugin is almost never sufficient. There's always a set of plugins that they need. And so they need these plugins to work together um, and work together well. Um, they're just looking for peace of mind when they're trying to create you know, their ideal pipeline or Jenkins uh, configuration. Um, and so what we're seeking to do then is to give them that peace of mind um, by giving them some sort of coordinated update, um, which is coordinated across all the different components that they need in their Jenkins instance, um, and especially for their use cases. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean we're giving them the absolute latest cutting edge. We're doing some verification work there to make sure these components are working together. Um, and we also really prioritize making sure that they are able to get the boring upgrades that you saw we talk about in the keynote uh, Tuesday. Um, and so what we're trying to do essentially is just offer a, a known verified path from one known configuration to the next so that you're not so unique. And so when it comes to the actual solution then, um, 
As we mentioned in the keynote, we're offering something today called CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise Distribution. Um, and what this is is a set of verified open source components. So these are a subset of the overall open source um, Jenkins ecosystem. Um, and these are components that we picked as you know, best of breed solutions for what they're trying to do. Um, maybe they're the best SCM plugin for, diff, uh, for Git. Um, and we're also doing testing across these components to make sure when they're installed on an instance, they work together and they're working as they're at being advertised. Um, and these things make up the, uh, the CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise Distribution. And this distribution is the core of the CloudBees Jenkins platform that we released this week. Um, you can go on our website, go.cloudbees.com, and download it, try it out today. Um, but basically, the platform itself then is uh, Jenkins Enterprise Distribution, so open source plugins, the open source core, all these things are validated to work together in conjunction. Um, and then also the CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise proprietary features. And maybe some of you are customers, you're already familiar. We offer things like security features, uh, management at scale, ops at scale, things like that. Um, and of course, as part of the subscription, there's also these other non-software components like support and things like that. Um, but basically, this enterprise distribution is just, again, a subset of the open source ecosystem, but we've done a lot of uh, verification work on that end. And Andres will go into the details of that. Okay, so now we go to the central topic of the of the talk, which is the cloud based assurance programs and the and the verified companies. So as Tracy has described, at the core of the CloudBit Jenkins platform, we have what we call the CloudBit Jenkins Enterprise Distribution, which is a selection of <coughs> sorry, a selection of um, open source components, both Gen both Jenkins Core and, and uh, selected. Sorry, selected plugins that are included in the in the distribution. Some of them go through the verification process we are going to to describe right now, and they are offered through to, through customers through a specific curated update center, which is itself a subset of the update center you, you will find in the com, in the community distribution. So the CloudBeach Jenkins Enterprise Distribution is a subset of the uh, Jenkins Enterprise One which is offered through an update center that is also a subset of the community one. And part of those subsets itself goes through this verification process we are going to describe right now. So the assurance progress by itself is the process or, or the set of processes we use to build the Jenkins enterprise distribution from the open source Jenkins distribution. The main parts of, the, of this uh, program are the selection of uh, open source components, basically that curation process that Tracy has just described a few minutes ago, taking some of them and putting it through the verification process we are going to describe uh, in the next section, performing uh, verification of the distribution as a whole, and then distribute, uh, deploying it through custom update centers that helps you stay inside this custom distribution. So, <clears throat> as I said before, some of the, of the components, which are all open source components, go through a process of what uh, we, we are calling verification. Uh, the first input to this plugin verification process is, of course, the set of plugins we are going to, to verify. We have, let's say, a, a queue a queue of components that we are going to, to go through this process. Some of them are already included in the, in, the, in the current version, as we're going to see in the demo. And the first thing we do, and the most important one, is doing the, what we call the critical use case identification. At the end of the day, each of the components that we install in our instances is supposed to satisfy some use cases. Okay, I, I will continue this. I will continue describing the process while we have the video back. So as I said, the first part is what we call the critical use case identification, which is basically identifying those use cases that the component must, must satisfy. We do that at the beginning of the process as we use these, uh, these critical use case sets as a reference for every other for the, the other, every other item in the assessment we are going to perform. As I said before, we not only select a specific 
plugin to be part of the distribution, but for each version of the distribution, we must also select the specific version of this plugin that we are going to introduce. And for that version is the one that we perform the, um, the verification process. This verification process, we can uh, think of it as having two perspectives. One of them is focused on the plugin itself, on the version of the plugin itself, and well, the, the artifacts it uses to, to build it. Uh, we, call, we could call that the, the aesthetic part of the, of the analysis. And then there's another one that is, hey, how this plugin behaves when introduced inside the distribution. The set of specific components that we are going to deploy as a single distribution. We call it that the, the dynamic part. The thing is that even if we don't change a version of a plugin from a version of the distribution to the another, the static part of the analysis still applies, but we have to go again through the dynamic part because the, as Tracy said, we want to provide boarding upgrades. That seems that we must guarantee that every version that we are deploying ha provides the same level of confidence. From the static part of the analysis, the main part that we are, uh, let's say, performing active assessments of the, of the plugin state involves both code-related things and user-facing perspectives. For example, we check that there is at least some documentation related to, to the plugin, in, either in the, in the open source wiki or in our internal cloud, cloud business network documentation, at least some description of the plugin functionality, some kind of chain log. There's a minimal set of information that we uh, specify that must be fulfilled by the plugin uh, to do that. We also perform some kind of dependency analysis. Is the dependencies this uh, plugin is bringing coherent with the, with the rest of the um, uh, functioning of the plugin. It's using a Java, level, a Java level that is coherent with the core baseline it is using. Are there any plugins that are using a, a newer core as a baseline than the current plugin, things like that? One of the most important parts of the verification part is analyzing the test coverage. But we analyze from, uh, let's say, uh, a non-automatic point of view. Why is that? As I said before, the most important part for us in the in the plugin oh, sorry, in the plugin verification wrong button is the critical use case identification. For us, it's more important or it's better in, in better shape. A plugin that has a global 50% coverage in tests but cover all the critical use cases. That a plugin that maybe have a 70 or 75 coverage, but is focused on tests on auxiliary. Uh, features and not the critical use cases. So we don't we don't focus only on coverage, but which part specifically on coverage? Always taking the critical use case identification. As we see, this critical use case we are using it for many things. We use it for plugin selection during the creation process. We use it for plugin verification. We're talking about individual companies. We also demand that the plugin has some kind of QA. Uh, QA tools integrated in the build, Java signature verification, static analysis, things like that. And they are consistently used in the, in the build. And we also have a set of best practices. For example, uh, there are some security issues that were fixed in a specific versions of Jenkins. If the functionality of the plugin may be affected for them, it should be adapted. For example, we have the, the famous security 144, which involves uh, changes in the way that client master conf uh, master agent configuration should should be performed uh, and things like and things like that. That list of best practices, best practices is continuing uh, continuously growing. And other part that we do is that we go to the public uh, to the open source era and we perform an evaluation of the current issues and we see if one of them uh, is a blocker for introduction of the uh, plugin into the distribution. The important thing is that this is not only, uh, let's say, a, a passive analysis from outside, from, uh, from cloud side. If we find for any of the elements of the assessment that we perform that there are elements that should be improved so that the plugin fulfills the requirements for verification that we have established, we proactively perform these changes, contribute them back to the, to the open source project, working with the maintainer of the, of the component, and then pick 
the new version that includes all improvements for verification into the distribution. That's the, the static part. Then we have the, the dynamic part, the one we must do with each version of the distribution. We must ensure that the set of plugins taken as a set, better say the set of components, both core and the different plugins, work together as expected. We analyze, again, based on the critical use cases, the coverage of the acceptances that exist for those plugins. We also uh, analyze the behavior with CJP-specific features, like the communication between operation center and client masters, which may be affected in subtle ways and by different changes in different plugins. And of course, and something that is today more important than, than ever, as uh, one of the goals we have with this program and is having these seamless boring upgrades and more frequent upgrades, is all the upgradability from one version to another. Besides, there are also other parts of in the program, such as multi-platform testing and, and all that stuff. Again, this is not only a passive part if we find some blockers for verification. Based on this part of the process, we proactively work with the maintainer of the component to include additional fixes and then pick them up. So, once we have this selection of plugins, when internally this selection of plugins and plugins version with together with a specific core version, internally we call it the, the envelope, but, it's, but that's not a name we we are using externally, so it, it, it has been used in some in some sessions before. So that uh, this uh, this is distributed in a specific update center that it is especially tailored for each version and each revision of the distribution. What is the specific of this update center? From the core side, it will offer the recommended upgrade path from your current version according to the current support policy. For the plugins, for those plugins that are part of this envelope, it will only offer the versions that we have decided are part of this distribution. So we won't offer upgrades for those plugins because the recommended configuration is the specific version we have recommended to use for that combination. And for every other plugin that is not part of that, we check that the dependencies they have are compatible when, in, when they are part of, the, of our recommended set, that they are compatible with them. And if they are not compatible, we offer a previous version that it is, and if it, if it is not found, we don't offer that plugin in the update center. So, as we saw when we were describing the challenges, once if, if, we, if you were to perform this process manually, once you have decided the set of plugins and plugin versions you want to use, you have to be careful because the, the update center can offer you things that can easily make you break the configuration you, you have decided to have. Right now, with the custom update centers, they will offer always plugins, updates, or, or all that stuff that cannot break the configuration we have defined. So, uh, how is this theory included in the current release that was made available a couple of days ago? So we are going to see that with a little demo. I'm going to start with a, let me, I'm going to start with an empty Jenkins home. I only have a license file. So that way I have an existing license and we don't have to go through all the, the licensing and stuff in, in this demo. And I'm doing this initial installation. Well, the, the menu bar is not shown in the projector, but I'm doing it without a network connection because we are going to use this opportunity to also showcase a new functionality in CJP2.x is that the that of the offline installer. In previous CGP version, every plugin that we bundled inside the, the artifact we provided was installed in the system whether we were going to use it or not. In CGP2, uh, 
you choose the plugins you want to have in your distribution, in your installation, and all other plugins that are included in, in the distribution are just available to be installed. But those plugins you do not want are not installing the system and are not consuming resources, providing additional options, and maybe confusing some, some users. So, uh, CGP 2.x is based on, on Jenkins 2, which has this story of being secured by default. So we have to provide an initial administrator password to start the setup wizard. This is the same setup wizard we see in, in Jenkins uh, open source, but the list of plugins we see here is change and tailor for the CGP uh, for the CGP distribution, that's right, the Jenkins Enterprise distribution plus the CGP components. In the wizard, all the plugins that are included are in one of three in one of three groups. There are plugins that are banned with the banner of verified. I let me use the pointer. These are plugins that before being included here has gone through the process of verification. Then, we have plugins. The very bottom. At the very bottom. Yep, yep. Okay, here. Plugins that are with this batch of compatible. These are plugins that have not done, have not gone through the whole process of verification. We have described it before, but at least have gone through the dynamic part. Um, and finally, these are the CloudBees, <coughs> the CloudBees proprietary plugins that are, of course, they've got a process which is at least at reach of the verified ones. Okay, so every plugin in the suggested list which is shown in the wizard, there are additional plugins in the, in the distribution as we will see now, are in one of these groups. Okay, I click install. This installation, as I said, is being performed fully offline. We are not connected to we are not connected to any network, but the installation is being performed as if we were in in a specific version. There is another difference in this process we have seen between the the CGP distribution and the Jenkins open source one. Right now, if you perform this installation using Jenkins open source and you go through the wizard and you uh, choose to install the selected plugins, it goes to the update center and picks the plugins. What does this mean? That if I perform the installation today and I perform another installation next week, the set of plugins I may get in my instance may be different because it may have picked different versions from the update center. As I said before, we use a custom update center for each version, so if you install this version today and you install this version a month in the future, you are going to, set to get exactly the same configuration. Okay? Again, uh, related to the secure by default, we have to create an, an admin user. Okay, and now we have a fresh installation of CloudBit Jenkins Enterprise, which includes the CloudBit Jenkins Enterprise distribution. Okay. So, before going to the specific of the assurance program, just to complete this uh, offline demo, let me go to manage plugins. There are no updates available, which is expected because we are offline and we cannot find any, any update, but we have many plugins available. These are plugins that were included in the artifact you downloaded to install the, the CJE, but they were not installed. If, if we were in a CGP 1X scenario, sorry, everything that was included in the installation package would have been installed. So you may have many options in the system that you didn't want. Now, even if you have an instance that is not connected to the internet, you have many plugins available, but w they will only be installed when you demand them, okay? Let me connect to, uh, to a network right now. Mm 
Just one second. We had the background music with the Star Wars theme. It would be useful now. But <laughs> just for the waiting. I'm more of an Imperial March guy, but okay. Now I have Wi-Fi, so I'm going to update the, the update sender metadata. Okay, so right now I have much more plugins available because right now we are getting the full address center with the uh, specifics I have described before. If there's any plugin in which the latest version would pick, a would have a dependency that is incompatible with a set of plugins and versions we have defined, it is filtered out automatically. Okay, so maybe you start looking for some plugin and you don't find it. Okay, it is possibly it is because it is it needs a dependency that it would break the current configuration. Okay. So let's go back to the assurance program. How do I fill the assurance program inside my new brand new install? Instance. Okay, there's a new plugin which is called the Beekeeper Upgrade Assistant, which is shown in, in the Manage Jenkins sections, which basically analyzes the current uh, components installed in your in your instance and compares it against the, the configuration we have uh, specified as the one to use in the in the distribution. Given that this is a newly installed instance, everything is in the correct configuration. So we have a green light here. I will use the pointer. Okay, and we have a breakdown of all the analysis that has been performed by the plugin. We not only check every plugin installed, we also, say, also check other things such as, hey, are you using the update centers that provide the specially tailored information for your version, the version you are using, yes or no? Okay, as I said before, um, right now we are making quite easy to get out of this uh, situation. Why? Because we, can, we must think of these first releases as, as a kind of providing a smooth transition from how things work in CJP 1X to a, maybe a situation in the future in, in watch in which we will want to keep you inside the distribution as much as possible. But we will provide a smooth transition to this way. So I can say, hey, I don't want anyone messing with my update center configuration. I want to be in the bleeding edge. I want to work as before. Okay, just say that you don't want to enroll here and nothing happens. We just, everything is disabled. You, say, you see there that the uh, that the plugin is disabled, no report information is shown. If at this point I go back to the manage plugins page, I see that there are updates available. Now that I'm not enrolled in the, in the assurance program, I'm not using this update center which is specially tailored for my version. Now I have all these updates available. All these plugins has been released, have released new updates since the moment we picked a specific version to be part of this version of the distribution. So for each of these plugins, I now have to make a decision. Do I, should I update or should I not? What do I do? Some of them we have detected that has some interaction that wasn't desired with some other component. And we have already provided fixes for them, but it's better if someone does this betting before us in our production environment. Okay, so let's do it. And in fact, if I go to the available tab, I may find that I have more plugins available than I had before because no filtering on the constraints we were setting on the dependencies are enforced when you are out of the assurance program. So let's say I, the two last ones. I'm going to upgrade script security and structs. Okay. They are downloading. 
Okay, I'm going to restart manually to do it faster. Now the background music yeah, would have been really, really useful, but we need to coordinate better with the stance, okay? I used the correct login at the first time, which is quite unusual. Right now, if I go to Manage Jenkins, I am still outside the assurance program, so I am still showed all the updates available. But if I go here and I say, hey, I, I would like to to have the upgrade system check the configuration for me. There are two issues now. Okay, there are two plugins that are not in the version that we are recommending. <coughs> Sorry. The, the plugin not only shows the, the description of the issue, but also provides us with information on what should we do in order to get the system into the recommended configuration. In this case, the system is recommending a downgrade. The system, by default, won't perform any operation. By default, as I said before, we are trying to provide a smooth transition from the behavior in CGP1 to the, to the new behavior we are going to be having in, in the CGP2 line. Uh, the system by default only provides information on what's happening in the system, but provides you with the option to automatically enforce whatever it can do. In this case, we can say, hey, I would like to let you perform automatic downgrades of plugins. Okay, downgrades are always much more dangerous than upgrades, but in this demo we, we have downgrades. As always, before performing a downgrade of anything, please perform a backup, okay? This is just for demo purposes, so we are going to go with the downgrade. Given that when you perform a change in a running plugin, you always have to, to restart. So I'm doing this right now. As I said, uh, no enforcement is performed by default. You have to opt in in the, in the kind of enforcement you want the beekeeper upgrade assistant to do for you. And one thing that we have to make really clear is that this enforcement is always related to the current version you have installed. As I said before, the custom update center we have for every revision in the system will offer you the recommended upgrade path when new releases are available, depending on the current release you have and the current support policy. But even if the update center is recommending an upgrade path, it will never, never perform an upgrade to a new version automatically. You will have to decide as of today as an administrator when I want to upgrade. The enforcement you can enable here is only related to keeping my configuration in the current version in the, config, in the recommended one. So it should, uh, should have restarted by now. Two for two. <laughs> and we are again in the recommended configuration. Okay? This is I would say the only visible uh, feature or user-facing facing feature of the assurance program, but uh, as we saw in the slides, most of the work related to the assurance program is done in the background. It's done in that plugin curation, that plugin verification that is done on some of those plugins. And this is just a reflect of the configuration we are recommending. But as I said, most of the work is Let's say it's invisible, and we want to make this as transparent as possible by just offering, by deploying everything through an update center that only offers things that we are happy with regarding the distribution. There's a, there's a point with that. As I said before uh, several times, we are providing kind of a, a smooth transition. So as of today, as of the current releases, 
The update center are not providing only plugins that are selecting in the distribution. We are still offering everything, just performing the filtering that they don't pull any dependency that would break the current configuration. Okay, but that's the situation in the current version. Okay? So let me go back to the slides. So this is included in both CJE and CJOC. They have different recommended set of plugins, different recommended versions of plugins, but this management done by the Beekeeper Upgrade Assistant is, is both available in Operation Center and in CJE in the current version with, uh, we encourage you to try and provide feedback as soon as possible. We are really happy about all the, the improvements that were included in, the, in this new CGP version. The most visible change is the uh, changing from Jenkins 2 core to Jenkins dot two X core. There are not possibly not many user facing changes, but there are many, many, many improvements in the plumbing so that we are sure that will uh, provide a better experience. It, it includes simplified licensing, better operation center, clear master communication, and this kind of stuff that may not seem very, you know, very easy to showcase in demos, and, but in the world, in day-to-day -day operation, it really pays off. So we really encourage you to try this new version, and we are really excited about it. All right, and the link that we're showing up there is for, so today we're only offering CJE distribution through CJP, it's the core of the platform, um, but in the future we are thinking about breaking out as its own standalone product. Um, so if you're not already a CloudBees customer, you're not already the, using the CloudBees Jenkins platform, we encourage you to go to that website, sign up um, for early access once we have that available. Um, but it will be a few months, and there's other few goodies that we might be inviting you guys to try as well. So. And that's okay. it. That's it. Thank, thank you, you guys. everyone. And thank you for coming to Jenkins World. Yeah.